Aaron, I'm, I'm thrilled to see the U.S. Army participating in cold response. I think it's our first time uh, in a long time, if not ever, uh, over 2,000 Americans here as part of this exercise. It has 15,000 soldiers from a, a variety of nations. Uh, the Army's contribution to this, of course, we've got a, a tank company from the ro a rotational force. Uh, we've got some uh, paratroopers here, uh, a variety of Americans uh, participating. I think it's very important because, number one, we need to train in this kind of environment. I was just talking to a tank crew that's describing the challenge of you know, changing out the tread on a tank to be able to operate on, a, on an icy road. A 70-ton tank starts sliding. These are things you know you have to exercise to learn. You can't get that from a simulator. Um, it's also about speed. Speed is what gives our political leaders some options. If we can recognize the situation and assemble and bring troops together quickly, speed, then maybe an, a crisis can be averted. Speed requires interoperability of equipment, procedures, uh, soldiers being accustomed to working with each other. So here we've got Swedes, Finns, Americans, Canadians, Germans, Brits, Norwegians, obviously, and also Army and Marines. It's a great opportunity to practice things that are essential for our security. I am sure we are never going to do anything by ourselves. Uh, we are always going to be part of a coalition, if not an alliance. Uh, all of our best and most reliable partners come from Europe, whether they're in NATO or uh, partnership for peace countries. So uh, the chance to practice with them is a great opportunity to continue to build that trust and confidence. And frankly, to the, I've been learning things all day from our allies, from the Norwegian Army, about how they're organized, things that I probably should have already understood, but it, it took me to get here to understand it. So, you know, to make our 30,000 look and feel like 300,000, uh, not only do we have to put more responsibility on junior leaders, we need the National Guard and Reserve, and, and I've got the uh, Adjutant General from Minnesota and the Commanding General of the 34th Division of the Minnesota National Guard are here also. Uh, Minnesota has a uh, relationship with Norway uh, that goes back over 40 years, a great example of how the Guard helps our 30,000 look and feel like 300,000. Working with allies, uh, rotational force, that fifth pillar is dynamic presence, which means we say yes to every opportunity, even if it's just a company, having American soldiers in all of these countries uh, of the alliance and across Europe, like we'll have a, a striker company in Finland in an exercise in May. This helps show that the United States is committed to their security, to helping to provide uh, stability and security in Europe. Yeah, I, I am really excited about the potential with the National Guard here. Uh, we don't have a state partnership with Norway, but Minnesota does have a unique uh, relationship that goes back with exchanges and that sort of thing. Um, and I would, really, I would really like to see the Guard's presence expand into Sweden and Finland as well. It's, the reserve component is so important, they're essential to us, not just important, they're essential to us. And uh, so having uh, General Nash uh, here from Minnesota uh, is a manifestation of that that I'd like to see uh, continue to grow.